another stranded Kyrgyz motorcycle. I feel like I'm becoming a rescue team. I'm here at the Pamir Highway, the second highest highway in the world. That's pretty high. I I'm, was just at 4,650 meters. And uh, to be honest, it's not a highway like we are used to be in Belgium. Um, I mean, we do have pitholes in the highways in Belgium, but not like this. I mean, there were river crossings, there were very bad roads, just gravel or sand. And there's people taking this road every day to go to work, to commute, or just uh, to go to another city here in Tajikistan. So it is pretty impressive to see this kind of a highway, or definition of a highway. Omdat we hier benzinestations waren, heb ik maar enkele flessen benzine gekocht om toch de route te overleven. Hello, bison. You look cool. Space for me. Oh, yeah, there's space. <laughs> Belgium and Holland united. Nice. Ta -da. Picture time! Here. Oh yeah, there she is! Goodbye Tajikistan! Hi, this is a new E. I am... Um, so I tried a bit of playing a bit of harmonica and I recorded a bit with a friend. So uh, here we go, we'll uh, play it in the video, we'll see how it goes. After the Kiesel Art Pass, we just went down and drove all the way down to um, to Kyrgyzstan. So this was the end of Tajikistan. Um, yeah, the road was pretty easy, pretty straightforward, and um, yeah, we were happy to be back in civilization in a bit and hit the bitumen. That was a good feeling. That's not good, the bolts of the Fenrir broke and I rode with it because I thought, I don't know what I thought, anyway it's not good, I need to try to fix it. Oh, they're not broken. The nuts just spinned off probably from Barting Valley and all the corrugations, so I'm pretty lucky. I'm just gonna find new nuts and then we can proceed. That's good. All right, let's give it a try. Okay, that's one. So a self-locking nut came off. I guess I need to put some locking thread plus a self-locking nut onto it and hopefully it hold it should hold like that if I can get it right all right that's already one 
try to keep the pressure on. Hold pressure on the wound. Keep it stable. There we go. All right, it's fixed. Nice. Looking sturdy again. I'm happy. Happy me. Happy goats. Ready to go. Put it back in. Let's hit that road again. It's the fourth or the fifth time that I'm having a bee sting in my neck. The problem is, I used to be, I used to be allergic to bee stings. I followed the immunotherapy, and now I should be all right. But still, it hurts and it's concerning. So let's have a look. Peak Lennon! Awesome! Look at that! I'm here in the middle of nowhere, almost at Lennon Peak and they had a flat tire so I helped them out with a little bit of glue and a new patch and hopefully we can fix their tire because it's a little dry from uh, civilization and I don't know where they need to go but anyway, I'll help them so they can go further Right, putting the patch on. Uh, hopefully, it will hold because it was a, quite a big uh, hole. Shield on. Okay, no, wait, wait, like uh, a few minutes, wait for the cola. Um, wait. All right, I fixed the tube. Hopefully, it will hold. I can go further to Linnet Peak, so I'll say again. That's for Daniel, that's, that's for Daniel. Daniel. Bye bye. Spasiba! Yeah, no problem. Pazasta! I guess the world stops here. Look at that. It used to be the whole glacier. Ooh, it's cold here. I'll set up camp there. What a great place for camping. Look at that. I'm looking at Lennon Peak and Lennon Peak is about 7,150 meters or a little bit more even. And then there, there's some more 6,500 peaks and 6,900. And then I am making some fresh broccoli. Put a little bit of noodles with it. I think it's gonna be good. I have my piva, my beer. And then I have my warm sleeping bag for tonight because it's getting very cold. We're now at uh, we're now at seven degrees. We are now at seven degrees and about uh, three thousand eight hundred meters high. So it will be a little chilly tonight. That doesn't look too bad. Lots of vegetables, a bit of noodles, some beef flavor. I think it's gonna be good. There's been a complete wide. It has been snowing the whole night. I'm gonna have a look. Holy fuck. Everything is snowed in. I'll stay a little bit more in the tent, I guess. Wow, look at that. Absolutely amazing. Everything is snowed under. Crazy. So much snow and it's the middle of the summer. I'm leaving the big land base camp and now I'm going to Saratesh. And tomorrow we are crossing China! China, here I come! Another stranded Kyrgyz motorcycle. 
I feel like I'm becoming a rescue team. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Sure, that. Oh. <laughs> so the chain broke loose and every bearing on that bike is worn. <laughs> the rear axle is also worn. But at least they try to fix it a little bit. So I hope they can drive further. That bike is not made for there. But apparently it's holding. And then we started our way to the Chinese border. So um, we teamed up with about 12 or 13 riders because um, in, in order to cross China or at least that region in the West, you need a guide and stuff. So we teamed up and then we headed towards the border and it was just unreal. Um, it had snowed the night before, like when I was at Peak Lenin and uh, the, the landscape was just stunning. Military checkpoint one. And I think I see there are two bikers. So these are, ah, the other ones. There we go. The group is reunited. Stress with ya. All righty then. That's for Dania. The roads were so nice, the Chinese built a really nice bitumen road and then the, the landscape, the mountains, we were looking at like 7,000 meters peak, peaks. Uh, yeah, it was just stunning. Wow, that is a lot of trucks. We're about five kilometers away of the Chinese border and it is full of trucks. That is crazy. But luckily, as a motorcyclist, you're able to go through. <laughs> so that is good. Well, this is the border. Strasuja. Passport. Passport. Uh. I lost my. I lost the, the part of my visor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we are leaving Kyrgyzstan and entering China. And then we hit the border. We checked out out of, out of Kyrgyzstan and um, went to no man's land. Um, yeah, that's about it. China, hello. And then arriving at the Chinese border, we, we realized that we were actually just too late it's and had a empty. bloody There's lunch break here. of three hours. So we, so we were just sitting at the border oh luckily no, it was nice weather because it was pretty high there it's lunch time. Um, ah. and um, yeah so there was a huge time difference but luckily we were able to eventually go through and then twice an x-ray scan and so many pictures and paperwork and then eventually we made it through and then our, our guide waited for us at the other side of the border and then uh, we were escorted to Kaishgar and then yeah, finally made it and um, yeah, that was a good feeling to to be in China because it was a little bit hectic, that's for sure. There's a lot of bikers. Now, uh, this is crazy. You have to know Kashgar is actually a Muslim region in um, China and is actually heavily controlled by the Chinese government and they kind of live in a life prison. It's actually really sad. Um, yeah, there's like barbed bar, wire and guards everywhere and they're really trying to suppress the Muslim religion. Um, yeah, it's actually really crazy what the Chinese government is trying to do to um, dominate and get rid of this uh, ethnic uh, group. Yeah, quite uh, crazy. Yeah, some of you might know, but um, Kashgar is the terminus of the Karakoram Highway and uh, this is just such a sick highway. Um, you'll see more in the next episode and then we'll cross the Pakistani border, which is bloody high, and uh, we'll go down 
um, Karakoram Highway, which is just spectacular. See you in the next episode.